Dark clouds hang over India's oldest Congress party and in the eye of the storm are the granddaughter-in-law and great-grandson of one of India's tallest leader, former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Congress leader Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi are being probed and questioned by income tax and other authorities over financial transactions made many years ago. It is known as the National Herald case. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is being questioned for the third day and the story remains in the headlines. So what is it all about? Let's break it down. The National Herald is a newspaper that was launched in 1938 by Associated Journals Limited. AGL was the brainchild of Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first Prime Minister and President of the Indian National Congress at the time. Nehru started the firm with 5,000 other freedom fighters as its shareholders and remained its chairman until he became Prime Minister. The motto on its masthead was, quote, Freedom is in peril, defend it with all your might. Unquote, and it soon became a mouthpiece of the Congress. In 2008, the 70 year old National Herald shut down with the debt of over 90 crore rupees owed to the Congress itself. In 2010, a new company called Young India Limited was set up. Rahul Gandhi, then the General Secretary of the Congress, was named its director. He and his mother, Sonia Gandhi, jointly held 76% of shares of this new company. The rest were held by Congress leaders Motilal Vora and Oscar Fernandez, who have since passed away. In 2011, AGL's holdings were transferred to Young India Limited. A year later, politician and lawyer Subramanian Swami moved to Delhi court, alleging money laundering by Sonia and Rahul Gandhi. A debt swap took place when the debt owed by AGL was transferred to YIL. YIL paid 50 lakh rupees to the Congress and in return, YIL got the right to recover the debt from AGL by acquiring the National Herald's assets, including real estate at one of New Delhi's prime locations. Petitioner Swami alleged that YIL had taken over the assets of the defunct print media outlet in a malicious manner to gain assets worth more than 2,000 crore rupees. So it's like this. Swami says that Vial paid the Congress 50 lakh rupees to recover a debt of over 90 crore rupees, but ended up securing assets worth more than 2,000 crore rupees. This also means that the Congress to whom AGL actually owed the money wrote off the remaining debt of 89.75 crore rupees. But wait, there's more. Interestingly, Vial had a share capital of just 5 lakh rupees. Swami also claimed that the original loan of more than 90 crore rupees that was given by the Congress to National Herald and AGL was illegal, as it had been taken from Congress party funds. In addition to the Gandhis, Bora and Fernandez, journalists Suman Dubey and technocrat Sam Petroda were named as accused in his petition to the Delhi court. This evoked a strong rebuttal from the Congress. Despite the fierce political slugfest, the case did not move ahead for several years. Things began to change after the Modi government came to power. Swami's campaign was renewed. He sent a letter to the then Finance Minister Arun Jaitley seeking an income tax investigation against senior Congress leaders in the AGL takeover case. Summons were issued by the Delhi court and the Enforcement Directorate launched a probe. In 2015, the Supreme Court asked Swami to approach the High Court for speeding up the case. And now cut to 2018, when the centre under the Modi government decided to evict AGL from Herald House, its office in New Delhi's print media district. The Bahadur Shah Zafar Mark. In 2019, the government's eviction notice was challenged and the Supreme Court stayed the eviction proceedings.
So what is happening now? Subramanian Swami is gung ho about his allegations, and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is being grilled by enforcement officials. Either way, and at least for India's oldest and longest ruling party, it is much more than the ongoing heat wave alone that will ensure a grueling summer ahead.